Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be going over the chaining operator that's provided by the dplyr package. So what does the chaining operator do? Well, what the chaining operator does, it allows us to produce multiple steps without having to save the, the results along the way. So if you look at what we've done so far, we've first created this data object. And then what we did was we overwrote our data with this mutate function, which added these two columns. And then we created this new data object called by tail number, where we group by the tail number column. And then lastly, we summarized this data using the summarize function. And we can do all of these steps in one go by using the chaining operator. So what does that look like? Well, why don't we just repeat this whole process, but instead do it using only the chaining operator. So what did we get here at the end? Well, we actually saved it in the prior video into this object. But if I just run this code, we are summarizing this tail number data object, and we're returning the mean flight gain. So let's do that with the chaining operator, but let's start with the original data object. So here's how this will look. First, we're going to type out the data object that we're interested in. And then we're going to be using this chaining operator. So the chaining operator is written as percent followed by this symbol and, followed and closed with another percent. This initiates the chaining operator operation. So from there, what's the first thing that we want to do? Well, if we take a look at what we did before, the first thing we did was we mutated the data. So if we look at the mutate function, the first thing we entered here was data. But because we're using the chaining operator, we don't need to do that anymore. And so the way that this looks instead is we're going to, again, type the mutate function but we get to exclude out this, this whole part of including the data because that's what the chaining operator is taking care of for us. So instead, we'll just say mutate flight gain equals departure delay minus arrival delay. And we also had gain per hour is equal to flight gain divided by air time divided by 60. Okay. So we've now implemented a single chain, but we're gonna keep going. So we wanna chain even more of these functions. We'll add on to the end here another chaining operator, and we'll go to a new line. And what did we do next? In the next part, we created this by tail num object where we group by data by the column tail num. So now in this case, again, we're gonna use the group by function but because we're using the chaining operator, we again get to exclude this part of the data. So now we can simply say tail num. And then that, that part is finished. And then what did we do? The last thing we did was we summarized. So we can chain one more time and we can do the summarize function. But because we've created this chain, we get to exclude this piece where we define the data object we're using. And we get to go immediately to type mean flight gain equals mean flight gain and then remove NA values. Okay, so this is what the chaining operator looks like. And when I run this whole piece, it's going to be the same as this piece. And you'll see that that's true. But if we compare the code here, and let me remove this column here so we can actually look at them side by side. Rather than saving all the intermittent steps, we can just do this chaining operator. So starting with data, we're going to mutate it, and we're going to mutate it this way. And then we're going to take this piece that's been mutated and we're going to group it by the tail number column. And then finally, we are going to summarize what's left here after we grouped the mean flight gain 
So this is grouped. It's based on data. We never had to create this by tail number data object, and we never had to overwrite this original data with this with this mutate function. So now we could even get rid of all of this information here. We could clear out our data here, and we'll see if this successfully runs. Okay, what we're going to do is first create data, and then we're going to mutate and summarize it all in one step. And you'll see that we were able to do that. And that's really all there is to chaining. We were able to do that with all the functions that we looked at in prior videos. We can now apply them using the chaining operator, and we'll have very clean code and easy to follow. All right, see you in the next video.